Good morning and thank you for joining me today. Today we've got a really exciting topic. It's called, it is finished, not I am finished. Big difference between the two. So, Jesus has ascended to heaven and is presently seated at the right hand of the Father. And it would be wrong to assume that he is inactively waiting for time to pass until the Father sends him back to earth again, something we know as the second coming. On the cross, just before Jesus died, he said, It is finished, not I am finished. If he had said I am finished, then it would mean either that his work is finished for all time, in other words, he stopped working, or that he died defeated and his mission was therefore a failure. But he said, It is finished. So, with this in mind, let's turn to Scripture. John chapter 19, verses 28 to 30 from the New International Version. It reads, Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on the stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now, for anybody, you, myself, and when we finished a task and we're reporting on it, we would say, I'm finished. It's natural. By this, we mean I have set out what I've accomplished to do. There's nothing outstanding. The T's are crossed. The I's are dotted. I've met all the requirements. And again, I remind us that if Jesus had said, I'm finished, something that would have been perhaps natural for us to expect, we would have probably understood that he achieved what he came to do or failed at what he came to do. But more importantly, I have finished means that things would have probably stopped at the cross. Yet he said, it is finished. And in this sense, the difference between I and it is massive. The implications of an it as opposed to an I, affects all of us today. Now, there's a Greek word there, to tell it si. um, It's translated, it is finished. It's derived from the verb teleo, which means to bring to an end or to complete or to accomplish. So, to tell it si is something you would use when you did what you set out to do, meaning there's nothing more outstanding. So where we are in this discussion at the moment, there's little apparent difference between it is finished and I'm finished. But that is until we realize the implications of this Greek word being written in the perfect tense. Now the perfect tense adds the idea that this, you know, this happened but it's still in effect today. It's not past tense. In the perfect tense, it is speaking of an action completed in the past, but the results are still here with us today. So the completed results of Jesus' mission is therefore historic, present and future. That is why to tell it sai was used. We now start to understand something of the difference between it is finished and I am finished. This cry was Jesus' cry of victory and truth. If Jesus had said, I am finished, it would mean contextually that the effect of his death would have ended at the crucifixion. Then we would have problems such as Matthew 28, 20, where Christ says, and surely I'm with you to the very end of the age. To interpret this piece would require some very creative hermeneutics, you know, to get in with the overall unity of the message of the Bible. In a similar light, one of the names of Jesus, Emmanuel, meaning God with us, would have been a temporary sense, meaning only as time on earth. But Jesus said it is finished. He wasn't expressing relief that his suffering was over. Jesus was not saying I am defeated. Jesus was not saying I have failed. Jesus was not saying I have nothing left to do. Jesus was not saying I am exhausted and cannot do this anymore. Jesus was saying that what he came to do was done. It was Jesus saying that what the law required for salvation 
had been accomplished. It was Jesus saying that the price of our redemption is paid. It is Jesus saying that the purpose of God and the history of man is accomplished. It is Jesus saying that his work continues. It is Jesus saying that he is here with us always. It is Jesus saying that his work in our lives and in the church continues. I'm finished would have been the words of someone who'd stopped working. But Jesus is still active. He's with us. A lot of people wonder, but what is Jesus doing now that he's seated at the right hand of the Father? A couple of things. He's directing the progress of the gospel and saving sinners. The gospel is about Jesus, who is alive, and it is still being proclaimed. We are instructed to share this good news. This is the will of the Father, and Jesus is directing this work. According to Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20, Listen carefully to this. All authority is with Jesus, who is with us till the very end of age. And it is on his instruction that we evangelize. evangelize. We are witnesses to him, Acts 1 verse 8. And while we're on the topic of the book of Acts, an author that I was reading up on here, Cole, he writes, Indeed, the book of Acts is best described as the acts of the risen Christ through the Holy Spirit with special reference of Peter and Paul. 1 Timothy 1 verse 15 reads, Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. Jesus saved, Jesus saves, and Jesus will save. We need to come to full acceptance of that fact. And on this we must be clear. He loved you first. He chose you. He accepted you. He, through the Holy Spirit, gives you life and faith. And we respond to his gifts of love, faith, and life by confessing that Jesus is Lord, the Son of God, and that God raised him from the dead. You can read more there in Romans 10 verse 9. We need to know that Jesus is with us as he's promised. He promised not to leave us as orphans. He promised one as he is. And he sent the Holy Spirit and thus he's with us always. We are filled with the Holy Spirit and through the Holy Spirit, Jesus is at work in us, shaping our character as we grow in becoming more and more like him. For further study there, you can look at Romans 8, verse 9 to 11, John 15, 26. Another thing Jesus is busy doing is he rules the universe. We're in a period known as the reign of Christ, Regnum Christi, the Latin. Now, for you and me, the concept of lords and ladies is quite familiar we usually think of the British aristocracy, Lord so-and-so and Lady so-and-so. But in apostolic times, people in Jesus' world would have thought of Caesar, who was also called Lord. So to call Jesus Lord was therefore to show loyalty to Christ over and above Caesar, something that could be punished with death. Here's where I'm going with this. Acts 2 verse 36. Jesus is Lord and Christ. This is a fact and we need to understand what it means when we say Jesus is Lord and Christ. It means he's presently reigning. His reign is not a future event. He's reigning already. And here is something else interesting. If we are to call ourselves Christians from the Greek Christianos, then it means that we belong to and irrevocably associate with Christ. It is at the same time, every time we call ourselves Christians, that we say, yes, I live under the reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is our Savior. He is Lord over our lives and He's Lord over everything. And you can pop in at Colossians 2 verse 10 to, to learn a bit more about that. Jesus is our High Priest. He's interceding on our behalf. Now Hebrews 7 verse 23 to 25 reads, Now there have been many of those priests, since death prevented them from continuing in office, 
But because Jesus lives forever, he is a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him. Because he always lives to intercede for them. This means that Jesus is our advocate when we sin. can read more than 1 John 2 verse 1 to 2. He is positioned between us and the Father and declares our righteous standing because of his sacrifice and our faith in him. There's a verdict of not guilty. Not because we did not do anything, but because he did everything. Jesus has also overseen churches. Through scriptures such as Colossians 1 verse 18, Ephesians 5 23, Ephesians 1 22 and others, we know that Jesus is the head of his church. What we might not initially realize is his overseeing role in church life. When we carefully read Revelation chapters 2 to 3, we notice sadly that Jesus has a complaint against five out of the seven churches. With this in mind, let's read together Revelation 2 verse 1 to 4. It says, To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work and perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name, and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. To bring it together, it is finished. But he, although seated at the right hand of the Father, is not finished. He is at work, and one day is coming again. So where does this knowledge leave us? Firstly, it leaves us with the assurance of our salvation. He said, it is finished. Secondly, it leaves us with the assurance that Jesus is still at work and reigns. It is finished is different to, I am finished. It also leaves us with the realization that, like Jesus, we should be doing the will of the Father and making disciples through our witness. Our attitudes, words, behavior, and deeds matter in the sense that they must reflect Jesus' work in our lives and point others to him. Fourthly, we can't serve two masters. If Jesus is Lord and reigning, that means we ourselves are not or should not. This is speaking to our love, our submission, humility, and obedience to him. And lastly, Because Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, there's no other way to salvation. Not through any person, not by any other name, and certainly by nothing we can do. Jesus said, it is finished. And it is only Jesus who could utter those words with authority and with assurance. Amen. Be blessed. See you again next Sunday. Have an amazing week. Bye-bye.